everybody. Happy Wednesday night. Welcome to Whimsical Wednesday, even though we haven't been very whimsical lately. <laughs> My name is Tracy. I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint, and I come to you live right here on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, every single Wednesday night, and I have for like three years. Uh, Dixie Bell Paint Company has many brand ambassadors, content creators, um, um, retailers, sorry. <laughs> Like we ran in at the last second. Uh, retailers across the country that do live videos right here on their page and in several of their groups as well. Um, we love to know that you're watching. Please say hello when you come on. Let us know where you're tuning in from. If you've never heard about Dixie Bell Paint, let us know. We would like to let you know more about it. Um, just say hello. Just join the community. We meet right here. We love to talk talk about our projects that are going on and that's where I bring you in tonight to my shop. So my business is Tracy's Fancy. I have a Facebook page that I put at the top of this video. I would love it if you would go over there and follow me over there as well. Um, what I do is I teach weekly and I also have custom orders um, across every week, one from one week to the next that I'm working on for clients. So what I do is I bring you into my client custom order projects that I'm working on for someone else and I just bring you along for the ride and teach you about the products. I solely use Dixie Bell Paint products. They not only have paint, but they have stain, which we're gonna be working on tonight. They have painting tools, application tools, glazes, waxes, top coats, gilding waxes, um, several different kinds of paint that they offer for you. So um, you, if you hang around long enough, we will make an expert out of you, I promise. My husband, Matt, is here behind the camera, so I cannot see your comments. Hello. And he uh, just said hello. Please, if you have any comments at all, um, ask them. If you have a question, ask them. Dixie Bell is also live here and we'll be answering comments as well. Um, let's see. So let me tell you what we're going to focus on tonight. Tonight, we're going to do something that is way out of my wheelhouse. Um, we are going to be talking about stain. I don't stain very often. Um, and as a matter of fact, when I don't want to do something on live video, it is my subconscious telling me I should do it on live video. It means I don't know enough about it, and um, I don't wanna come to you and teach you something wrong, but I don't think that I will. My information is correct, and my information will be correct, but I just haven't done it enough that I'm, so I'm not proficient at it as I am in painting. You can give me any type of paint job and I'm good, but when it comes to staining, I'm a little hesitant just because I don't do very much of it. I don't really enjoy it, um, but I got really excited about the outcome today. So maybe that'll change just like me painting white last week changed. So we're gonna focus on taking a golden oak wood, which a lot of us have, and turning it into more of like a restoration hardware, farmhouse, cottage vibe, instead of that you know 1980s golden oak that we all had. So um, I have a client who sent me a very large double pedestal table um, and like, how many leaves are there, babe? Four leaves Four. and the table. Um, so that's what I, I started working on it yesterday. Um, so we're gonna be using no paint gel stain. Uh, and then we're gonna, after I finish showing you how to use no paint gel stain or what I did with the no paint gel stain, um, then we're also gonna bring the, one of the bases over and I'm gonna clean it and paint it with you. And if I can get the chalk paint dry enough, we're even gonna dip into some silk paint for a little bit. So Dixie Bell has a new line, um, their silk line on top of the chalk mineral paint. So we're gonna use both of them together and I'll tell you why um, closer to the end of the video. We'll be on here for about a half hour or so. So hang with me and um, we'll get to that. So do I have any questions or comments before I turn around and tell them what we've done so far? Nope, just people coming in saying hello Lots from all over. Yep. From all over the world. I'm so glad you guys are here. Right, you recognize world. names, tell me, say, say who they are. I love knowing Jennifer, you. Jennifer, Nina. Yay. Uh, let's see here, Lynette. Hi, family. Hello there. Missy, Patricia. I love when he helps me, but I can't see the comments. So I like kind of knowing who's in the house. Um, Got 167 people so awesome. far. Awesome. Thank you guys. If you know anyone who has an ugly kitchen table or um, an ugly golden oak something or kitchen cabinets even that they might want to stain, please hit that share button and let's get this information out there because it's so stinking easy. It's so easy. So this is what we've done. This is the original. This is the original color right here. So this chair, there are, how many chairs do I have? I only have four, four. chairs because I think she has two other end chairs. So this is the color of, this is golden oak people. This is what it looks like. This is a, a beautiful oh, table and chairs. It was, um, do y'all like my boots? He's showing you my boots. 
Um, this is a, she had it made by uh, the Amish. She bought it from one of the Amish companies that, that where they hand make, what do you call that? Like the Amish They're furniture. Amish? Yeah, the Amish furniture. Yeah, call it Amish furniture. Companies. Um, so it's Amish super hardy, very, very well made, solid wood. Um, but it's oak, it's outdated, and she's really trying to kind of update her space. And so she didn't really want to get something new because this is such quality, such quality um, workmanship. So she brought it to me. So this is what it looks like at first. It's got a very orangey vibe to it, right? All right, so that's what the wood looks like at first. Then we sand the wood. And let me tell you why I sanded it. It's not necessary, but this is the sanded version. This has been sanded and dust free. All right, so Matt and I sanded down all of the leaves um, and the tabletop itself. And the reason we did that, no paint gel stain does not require you, uh, it will go right over a factory finish. So we could go right over, we could have gone right over the table. But when we ran our hand over the table, we could feel it was very, very dry. It had some um, rough patches, areas that were patchy feeling probably from you know, years of cleaner, um, years of water stain, you know, not using coasters and, and placemats on the table. You couldn't really see, well, you could. You could see some spaces as well. So I felt like we could go right over the factory finish, but it, uh, I felt like it might be super patchy um, with, because we were going dark with the espresso. So, and by the way, you'll know this is espresso, right? Not expresso. So many people say espresso with an X. There's no X in the word. It's just espresso. <laughs> Um, so we sanded it down. It was really easy to sand. Um, it, it came right off and this is what it looks like. We could do no paint gel stain right over this. Yeah. Do you have a question? Uh, yes. Can I paint directly over shellac? Yes, you can. Yes. As long as your shellac is dry. Are you talking about using chalk mineral paint over shellac? You can't. If you don't let your shellac dry really well and cure and then you put chalk paint over it, it will likely give you a crackle look. So be careful. That's the only, that's a drawback with using shellac. Okay, so this right here um, is the sanded down wood. Like I said, I told you why we did it. You don't have to sand down for no paint gel stain, but we did because of that reason. So sand it down, this is what it looks like. So then what I did, I could have stained right over this, but I want to make sure that I got a really even, this is obviously the after, isn't it beautiful? Um, I wanted to make sure that I got a really even non-blotchy look. So I went ahead and used a wood conditioner, and this is what it looked like after the wood conditioner. So all it really did is brought it back to its original color. Um, and the wood conditioner, Dixie Bell does not carry a wood conditioner. Um, the wood conditioner was, I believe I used Vera Thane. Was it Vera Thane? Something like I that. I think was the wood. Very strong odor, not my favorite thing in the world but it, it does a great job. This was the sanded version. I put the wood conditioner on it. So that, that factory top coat finish is gone, but it's got this very, very, uh, what, I, what I equate it to is putting primer on your face before you put your makeup on. So you know how you wash your face, you get, you know, you do a nice little scrub and you get it to this right here. It's all fresh and clean and raw. And then before you put your makeup on, you put the wood conditioner on. You don't have to do it, but it does help you to have a less blotchy look. Um, if, because there's imperfections in your wood and wood is a living, breathing, porous type thing. So the, the conditioner just goes on, it dries in about 10 minutes. It's very strong fumes, so very high VOCs. I wasn't fond of it, but it soaks into the pores of the wood, sort of sets it up and gets ready for your no paint gel stain. All right, so that's my recommendation um, and that's what I did. So that is the original. That's the original, that's sanded, this is conditioned. So we went from conditioned to this beauty, which is just fantastic. I love it, it's one coat. One coat and we're about to do, we're gonna do both of those boards right here together. All right, so I'm gonna get busy and stop talking. Um, one coat, I put it on, let it sit, wiped it back, that's it, it's done. Now I am gonna need to seal this, I do need to seal it. I don't think I'm gonna go darker. You can build with no paint gel stain, you can, I could stay at this tone or I could go even more opaque. This is very sheer so I can see the wood grain. I could even go deeper and darker if I wanted to. You could do two coats, you could do three coats, but I think I'm gonna leave it just like this. I really, I like it. Do they like it? Do they like yes, it? Yes, they yeah. do. Does anyone have any questions before I get busy? No questions no. yet. No, okay. So I put this 
on, and this is silly. You might want to talk louder. Somebody's suggesting you might want to use your mic. My, um, my, the microphones aren't working, you guys. Well, she says, I think you can use your mic now. I've seen people using them this oh, week. Oh, try it. Will you grab it and we'll try it? Mm -hmm. uh, what color gel stain is this? Okay, we're going to talk about that. This one is the es espresso. Espresso, no pain gel stain. In the, the blue velvet bag right there on the right. Microphone. Okay, so this is the espresso. Espresso, no pain gel stain. It's the color of coffee. It looks like coffee grounds. It's super, super, super dark. I will tell you, after you sand, um, you can use a microfiber rag, a wet cloth, but I don't know if very many people have used tack cloth, but I really like tack cloth. I don't know what's on tack cloth. But I get it at Home Depot. Um, it's got like a waxy, kind of a sticky substance on the cheesecloth itself. It makes it yellow. And when you wipe that over the sanded version, it just takes every bit of that sanded dust off of there. And then I just keep the rest of it in. Um, it gets it really, it gets it nice and cleaned up and ready for your stain or your conditioner or whatever you're choosing to use. All right, the no paint gel stain is oil-based, you guys. Dixie Bell does carry water-based stains. Um, they're the Voodoo gel stains. I love them. I used Voodoo gel stains for years on my plank walls. When I used to do plank walls, like my wall back here, um, and we used, Matt loved them, right, babe? Because they're, they're water-based, they go on. Um, and I could have done that on here, but I wanted to go with this like super deep, dark look. So no paint gel stain, oil-based, put your gloves on because you will get it on your fingers and it's hard to get off. Matt's gonna hook up this microphone and we're gonna see if uh, it works. I'll just do it testing. <clears throat> Okay, give us just a second. Y'all let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if my mic is working. Hearts, thumbs up. Let me know if you can hear that or do I sound really far away? If there's a delay, will you cut me off a big, pretty big wad of that um, over there, babe, please? I need my rag. Yeah. Thank you. Can y'all hear me? Let's see. Mike is not working. All right, I'll take it off. Okay, no big deal. I'll just talk loud. Okay, so let me get another board up here. I'm going to put this board up. I know it's kind of silly to put it on my easel, you guys, but I felt like it, it let you see it really well. Plus, um, I'm not down on the floor on my hands and knees. Um, I just felt like this worked better. You guys could see better. stir stick and you want to stir it up really well. Let me get the stir stick because I'll show you what it looks like. All right. So it looks kind of like pudding. See that? It looks like pudding. It's a pudding. It's like gel. It's like a gel consistency. Now I know that there, you know what? I love this. I like it so much better than a regular, um, than a regular stain that we've used that comes in a can. I like that. I, I feel like I have more control with this. However, I watch some YouTube videos and like the old, the woodworking guys, they don't like it. They don't like the gel stains. They say it's messy and they don't know why anyone would use it. And I'm like, I feel like I have so much more control with it. So, um, here, baby, you stick that over there. Thank you. Yeah, everything else is super runny. Yeah, Matt, Matt's a, Matt has stained a lot, a lot. And so I do find comfort. He he uh, gives me a little bit of comfort when I do these projects. I'm always so great. I'm going to mess the wood up. <laughs> I don't know why. All right, so you can apply this with... You can use one of Dixie Bell's applicator pads if you want, but I, I like to save these for my top coats. I use these when I use Skater Hide, which is what I'm going to use to seal this piece. So I'm not going to use both. You can actually also brush, brush it on. Um, one, the natural bristle brush, the Dixie Bell um, chip brushes, the, the fancy chip brushes that they carry, what do they call, call those? Premium. The premium chip brushes, those will work really well. Or you can just apply it with a rag. So this is um, a bed sheet. This is a bed sheet that we cut up. It's like an old flannel bed sheet. Um, and that's what I'm going to use. So I'm just going to dip this down here into the stain. And you want to put it on liberally. Just like this. I'm going to do across the top edge as well. 
And I'm not really rubbing it into the wood yet. I'll go back and do that in a minute. I'm just applying it very liberally. Just like this. Now, the most of the products that Dixie Belle carries are very, very, um, you know, they're user friendly as far as like the VOCs, but this does have VOCs. If you're gonna be, you need to be in a well ventilated area, it's not bad. It's not like the, the Verathane conditioner in any way, but it uh, definitely you want to have like a fan going or wear a mask if you're going to be exposed to it, you know, for a long period of time. Now, something I did notice, you want to go with the grain of the wood, but, but even though we sanded it back and I conditioned it, I noticed that there's some areas that it doesn't go into the grain. So you can actually work it a little bit. You can go ahead and, you know, move left to right, get it into the area, as long as you go back and straighten it out. It's sort of like when you apply chalk paint. You want to get it down and make sure you're getting down into that grain of the wood and then going back and rubbing up and down. Uh, like Deb Close wants to know what color is that you're using? This is espresso. And the let me tell you what colors they have it in. The no paint gel stain comes in a cherry. I think it's called Georgia cherry, Georgian cherry or something like that. It comes in a black. Uh, it comes in white, gray, and espresso. I think that's right. I think that's five. And Dixie Bell's on. They can let me know if there's another one that I'm missing. Lori wants to know, uh, if you want to put NPSG on dry wood, is there something I should do before applying it? Is she talking about no paint gel stain? Yeah, no paint gel stain on dry wood. So like a piece of lumber, just like a piece of lumber. No, you can put it right on. That um, was dry wood that you were using. Yeah, that's, that's like this is here because we sanded it down. Um, to the raw wood. We, we did, this was not, we didn't go over a factory finish. We sanded it down. This is sanded down to raw wood, raw open for porous wood. Okay, so that's that. Now, if you'll notice on this piece over here, babe, will you let them see that we actually uh, also stained on the inside. So where you've got your leaves, you don't want to have a raw finish in there. We actually sanded that back. And I ran my rag around the side and stained that as well. Because look at this. Take them around the side of this. Um, here. See how it's raw? We sanded that down. So I'm going to go ahead and take whatever's left over on my rag and rub down the sides as well. Just so, you know, when you have your joints meet on your, on your table, that you don't have a, a real light color or that factory finish orange in between there if you didn't sand it off. Now, Linda is my client's name, and she may be on. Has she said anything about it? She said she was going to try to What's find it. What's her name? Her name is Linda. Linda. I don't know what her last name is. Uh, there's probably a Linda or two in here. we got 200 <laughs> people on. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let that sit. It's got a little bit more on it than I need, but we're going to let it sit for just about 10 minutes, and then I'll come back with a clean cloth, and I'll wipe back over it. But in the meantime, I'm going to move this one and we're going to put the other one out. Y'all see how easy that was? So easy, right? Now, this does have a skirt. This does have a skirt right here, this orangey skirt. But we're actually going to paint the, the, the trim that goes around the table is going to be painted. So this is going to be painted. We're going to paint the, the base here in just a minute. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to paint that. I mean, I'm not going to stain that. All right, we'll put that there. Let's do another one. Oh, wait, wrong one. That one's raw. I'm going to do the conditioned one. So we'll let that set about 10 minutes and come back with a dry cloth and wipe that back. All right, let's do this one. Uh, Dixie Bell says you can use Big Mama's Butter can be used as a wood conditioner. Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? I did not know that. I didn't know that. That makes a lot of sense. Hmm. I'm going to need to do that on a test board. Um, I would say I would do it on the on this extra piece, but I would hate for it to, I just worry it would have a different look than the others. I want to keep it, keep it the same, but that's a good idea. I didn't know that. I used Big Mama's Butter to, or Butta to uh, seal the white piece that we worked on together for the last two weeks here. Um, that's what I used to seal that piece. So, I said Dixie Bell didn't have a wood conditioner, but... But they do. I mean, and I knew that because we use it on the inside of drawers and we use it, you know, um, on the on the tracks to make, to kind of lubricate your tracks. 
I didn't even think about using it as a pre-stain conditioner. Genius. Man, I wouldn't have had to send you out to Home Depot last night. <laughs> Good to a, know. He made a special run for me because I didn't care. I didn't have it. I didn't have any of the conditioner. I love this color. I love it so much. So pretty in comparison to the color of that chair over there. Can you use hemp oil as well? Uh, I don't know. Dixie Bell? Let's let Dixie Bell answer that. You know what? This is not my jam. So we'll all learn something together. Let's see what they say. You like it, Matt? Yeah, I like it. What's your favorite color stain, Matt? Um, I tend to like more of the reddish browns. I know they're probably out of date, but you would like. Would you like that in our house? That wouldn't go in our house at all. Uh, no, it wouldn't go in our house. But that's just doesn't mean I don't like it. Doesn't mean you don't <laughs> like it. That's right. Yeah, that's not. That would not be my. That would not be my choice. I think black would be really pretty. Black stain. And gray. I would love to use their weathered gray stain as well. All right. So that's not rubbed in, guys. I'm rubbing very lightly. I'm not like rubbing it in. How long should you wait after applying butter before you stain? That's a good question. Let's let Dixie Bell ask the answer to that. We'll refer that one over to the Yeah, Dixie we'll Bell. let Dixie Bell teach us that. Dixie Bell, I want to know. <clears throat> I mean, I would think as long as you don't put it in real heavy. I mean, the, the conditioner that I used was very thin, like alcohol. It was like straight alcohol thin. Um, so I'm going to put this away. I'll be right back. Uh, it was super thin and um, it was ready to it was ready to put stain over in about 10 minutes. Did they answer yet? Because I am curious. Okay, I don't think I think let's get the base over here. All right, guys, let me show you all the base. And let's move on. So if this were you at home and you were working, you can let these set aside. Actually, it's been about 10 minutes, hasn't it? We could wipe that one down. Probably. Let's wipe that one down. All right. So I'm going to get used to the same rag. I'm just going to turn it inside out here. You want to angle over here a little bit, babe? All right. And she's in that same rag. You don't want to leave it on too long because then I don't want... Oh, got it on my hand. I don't want it to be uh, that different from my other piece. And the other piece, I only let it sit for about 10 minutes. So since we are doing leaves, I would like them to all be about the same. That would be nice when she puts, it, puts the table together. So you just want to take off the excess. And that's it. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Look at that. I mean, it's just rich, but it's so pretty. I love it. What a difference. What a difference. I'm gonna go ahead and rub this one back a little bit because I know if I start painting on the base, I'm gonna forget about it. Take some off of here. I'm just using a real flat surface and those applicator pads work really, really, really well, but I'm saving them for my top coat application of Gator Hide, which this table is gonna get. Um, I will be using Gator Hide on it. Does that look about the same as the other bag? Yep. Is that good? Maybe a touch darker. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's get the base <clears throat> over here. You want to back that up a little bit, and we'll bring the base around. I think I'm going to do it by myself, actually. Okay. So this, this is the base. And I know Matt's going to have to back out a little bit. Tripod is too tall for this. Um, you can angle down a little if you want to. Yeah, I did. Okay, so my my uh, leaves are drying. So now we're going to work on this this piece. This is one of the bases. This this is a double base pedestal. So there's this one and another one that looks just like it that goes under the oval table. Um, so what I've done. I have not cleaned this yet. Now she cleaned it before she brought it to me, but it hasn't had white lightning used on it. So um, we're gonna use white lightning. I've already mixed it into this. This is actually a warm ball of water. Um, I just put a tablespoon into this little jug and I shake it up here. 
to know it hasn't dissolved all the way because I did it right before we went live. Kimberly wants to know if this was an existing finish that you just uh, stained or did you sand it down? We sanded it down. We sanded down the, the, um, the leaves. Melissa used to have that table. She did. Is it Melissa? Is it Peterson? Upton. Uh, Melissa Upton. Hi, honey. Melissa List. All right. So normally I would spray white lightning all over this, but I'm afraid. Will you use that for me, babe? I'm afraid I'm going to get white lightning on there. Yeah. Um, she's already cleaned this. I think she told me she used a vinegar and water solution. I just don't want to get uh, my white lightning on the stain that I've already done. So I want to clean real well one time before we start putting a coat on here, a coat of paint. Let's see, but it does. She's right. It's very, very clean. I'm going to do just the front here for you guys to see. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. I mean, it's got a little bit, a little bit of stain color coming off, but not much. So after you use white lightning, you want to follow the straight water. So I'm following the straight water. And when I say I give it a shower, I do just like that. I'm watering the whole thing. It's just letting the water run down off of it. I call that a shower. You want to let that run over it and wipe off. That will wash off any of the white lightning that's on the piece. Because if you have white lightning on your piece and you don't get it off, you will cause an adhesion problem for yourself. And we don't need that. And the beauty of Dixie Bell paint is that it adheres to almost anything. It adheres to glass, wood, metal, formica. It adheres to all, whoop, all surfaces. Brandy Garcia says she noticed that a lot of times the edges of the furniture tops tend to stain a little dark, so she wipes those back first. Oh, that, you know what? You're right. You're right. I agree with that. I think it's because you're flush with the, the grain instead of going with the grain, you know yeah, what I mean? I would agree with that. <clears throat> okay, so my client brought me a knob from her china cabinet. It's over there, baby. Will you bring it to me? She brought me a knob, and she also showed me a picture of what she would like her table to, you know, kind of the vibe. So this is the knob that goes to her china cabinet. It's not white. It's not really even... I guess it's like an off-white color. Um, so it matched perfectly with drop cloth. Like, perfectly. You want to show them? Teresa yeah, Carr wants to know if we're going to sand the chairs before we stain. Uh, if not, will it take more than one coat to stain to get the same look? I would assume so. Um, okay, hang on just a second. The chairs we're going to do next week... <laughs> right here on live so we can talk about that um we Sweet. are gonna i am gonna scuff back the chairs i'm not gonna sand them the seats as raw as the tabletop but i am gonna scuff them back some and try to knock that factory sheen off of the top um and then i'm gonna stain is that the answer to her question i believe so libby wants to know she's coming in late uh she just bought the gel do i have to sand first you do not you do not have to sand it will go over a fact i've done a live video here where it's gone right over the factory finish. All right, so this is the top uh, of drop cloth, and this is the knob that goes on her china hutch. So I think that's a pretty dang good match. I knew it when she showed it to me. I was like, that's drop cloth. So that's what we're going for. So I've got my drop cloth out of here, and I just I cleaned it with white lightning. I washed it with water, and we are ready to go. Where's my paintbrush? Got my paintbrush here, and I'm just going to start putting this on. Now, normally, we would talk about uh, priming, right? Normally, we would talk about, do we need to prime? Is this going to bleed? And if I were using, if I had, were planning on using a top coat like Gator Hide on the base or any of the top coats, I probably would have put a coat of Clear Boss on here. But I have a different plan, and this is the beauty of the Dixie Bell products, and that is that you need to do what's going to work for your project. There's no right or wrong way. Uh, there's not only one way to get there is what I mean. There are some wrong things to do, but there's not just one way to get there. My finished look is going to be very clean. It's not going to be distressed, and um, I do want to have a light glazing as well. But I'm not going to have a waxed top, and I'm going to use silk. So right now, I'm putting down a coat of chalk paint because chalk paint has amazing 
um, adhesion for one thing. And uh, I'm gonna put this down as my bottom layer. And then I'm gonna let this dry. And I'm gonna come back with a coat of silk on top of it because I don't wanna put a top coat on it. And silk has a built-in top coat. And I want this, I, instead of having a chalk paint finish on it, I wanna have the silk finish look on it. Um, and because I know I'm gonna glaze, when I wax or glaze over my chalk paint, I uh, usually put a top coat down on it first. Well, I don't, I don't wanna put a top coat on it down. It's gonna cut out a, a step for me. Um, and I don't need to worry about bleed through because I'm not gonna be putting a top coat on. And I taught y'all last week that the top coat is usually what pulls the bleed through through, is that top coat. So if you're using silk, you don't have to worry about that because it doesn't require top coat, so it's not gonna pull that bleed through. Marianne wants to know if you scuff sanded that base. I did not. I just cleaned it really well. No. Nope, yeah, I Patty says that still looks shiny. No slick stick. The base, it's the lights. It's the lights that we have. It makes the wood finish. No, it's not. It's it's a uh, got a very hard wood grain. You can feel every every wood piece of wood grain on it. So no, it's got plenty of tooth to it, and now we're giving it even more. Why not just use the primer? I because I just like that these two colors are the same instead of having the white primer and then this. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. There is no right or wrong way. You can do what you want. If you don't have drop cloth as a base and you want to use boss white, you can use boss white. I could have used boss white and then use silk on top of it. I could do it with just scuffing it and use silk by itself. That's the other option. Just scuff it up, use silk. You didn't have to use the chalk paint base. Yeah. Melissa wants to know, are you using the silk as your glaze? No. And what I'm color? I'm using silk in the same color. Where did it go? Right here. I'm using silk and endless shore which is almost identical to this one, two of the same color. All right, so let me get this dry and we're gonna bust open our silk and let y'all see that. We'll now silk. I'm gonna use um, besting wax in uh, brown. I'm gonna use besting wax brown. Will silk seal enough for the kitchen cabinet use? A hundred percent, yes. Great for kitchen cabinet use, yes. And I've painted a lot of kitchen cabinet in my days. It alleviates needing to put a top coat on it. Um, now, I mean, if you, it's going to be in an area that's like a bathroom where it's going to get a lot of water, I would still probably put a coat of gator hide on top of it. Um, but again, that's your choice. That just depends on where you are and how you're going to use it. Libya wants to know if gray boss would work. Yes, gray boss would work. Gray, white. Gray's my favorite. All right, Donna wants to know, if I use two coats of fluff, then add gator hide and wax after, do I need to do boss before, whoops, disappeared, before painting the fluff? Oh my goodness. Well, do I need to read that again? No, you okay. don't. What, what, did you watch last, who was asking that? Uh, let me see here. That depends. What, what matters is... Donna Hartman. Donna. I don't know what type of wood you're painting. Donya. Who? Donya. Donya. I don't know what type of wood you're painting, um, but if it's going to have a bleed through and you're going to use a fluff paint and you're going to put gator hide on top of it, you might get bleed through. So I would, I always recommend priming first with gray boss or white boss for sure. And we did that last week. All right. So as you know, the chalk mineral paint dries in about 20 minutes. I forced it dry here with my heat gun. It's already dry. This is already dry to the touch. Let this leg dry down here. See, it's already dry to the touch. Nothing coming off here, that's on my hand. And then we're gonna put, um, let's bust open the silk because this is my first time to use silk on a live video. I have painted with silk, but I have not done it on live. So. Uh, Sharon wants to know, uh, would you condition the wood on the chairs before staining them after you scuff sand? No, I don't think I will because I'm not gonna sand back all the way to raw. I think you really only condition the wood if you sand it all the way back to the raw wood, and I'm not gonna do that. Is that the right answer, Matt? Is that what you would say? Since we're just gonna scuff through that top shine finish, the top sealer finish, I don't think we would condition that. No, it's we just, just for scuff dripping. through it, um, clean it off really well, and then we'll use the no paint gel stain. But we're gonna do that next week, you guys, right here. Same thing, we're gonna, I'll have the table finished by then, and then um, we'll work on a chair. Hang on. 
doing? Sorry, guys. I flipped the camera around. To your face? <laughs> yes. You can see straight up my nose. That's awesome. I got to see your pretty face. All right, this has like a skin on it. I need the to roof of our garage. There we go. I'm so excited, you guys. We are more cleaned out than we've been in a long time in the garage. So we are about to redo our floors and my entire storage system in my shop. I'm super, super excited. Okay, so will you get me a stir stick, babe? Yeah. Oh, good. We're at 740. We've got just a few minutes. I just want to put a coat of silk on here. It's, it's not. I just need a stir stick. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So you want to make sure anytime you open a brand new jar that you stir really well because a lot of the sediment and uh, the properties have separated and are down in the bottom. This one doesn't feel that way. It shook up really easily. Um, just want to make sure that you've got your pigments and all of your materials nicely mixed so that you get good adhesion, good color, good coverage. All right, I'm using the same brush. I'm using the same brush that I have my drop cloth on. Um, uh, Donna wants to know your opinion of gator hide versus uh, clean satin sealer. Oh, they're both my favorite. Those are my two favorites, that's my opinion. Um, the satin is my favorite to use on all pieces, and then gator hide is my favorite to use on any type of top surface or hardy surface that's going to get a lot of use um hi guys thanks <laughs> the uh, the satin finish is much more user friendly in all honesty to be completely honest gator hide uh, i feel like has a learning curve um but once you can get past it and don't listen to the hype of people oh it's so difficult to use it's really not i've done many videos sh share many times how um, I use it on all different colors, um, and I think it's a, a, just a wonderful product, and that's what's going to go on this tabletop surface. Not the base, but on the tabletop surface. Look how pretty that is, y'all. So the difference that I'm feeling immediately in the, um, this is Endless Shores uh, of the silk paint right on top of the chalk paint. The chalk paint feels great underneath it. I can tell that it's, that it's uh, laid down a really nice tooth. For the silk paint the silk paint literally goes on like its name it's going on like silk it has a much uh much higher <laughs> sheen than the chalk paint the chalk paint's got a a nice you know flat matte finish to it and this has a really pretty sheen i love it look how pretty the furniture duchess wants to know what happens if your first coat of satin finish is streaky your fir first coat of satin finish is streaky Spray it is it a really, really thin coat? Um, is it cloudy or streaky? If it's streaky, then you just need you just need to put another coat on, a second coat, maybe a third coat, very thin. Um, and those areas that look raw, like they didn't get touched with the top coat, will fill in. And then by I would say by your second, third coat, it's nice and complete. Uh, two things. One, what did you say the color of that silk is? This is endless shore, and, right? Okay. Am I right? Yes, endless shore. And Wendy wants to know, does the silk have a learning curve or is it smooth and easy on? It's <laughs> smooth and easy. There's no, yeah, I've used it um, a couple of times now. I've used it on a desk. Uh, I've used it in my own personal space already. I did a jewelry box on it. I haven't used it a lot, but enough to <clears> say <throat> that it's really, really easy to use. So I'm just going right over the chalk base and that's it. I'm not going to need another coat. So... so that's it. And I'm not going to top coat it. It's going to dry and I'm done. I don't have to, I don't have to buff it. I don't have to top coat it. It's going to dry and done. And then I'm going to go back with the brown wax. And the beauty is to put the best stained wax and brown over it. I don't have to have that top coat over it. It won't suck in. It'll move around on top of this really easily. So, so she wanted to verify it's okay to go over then without sanding the furniture duchess. Um, to go over which part? the she was talking about her first coat was streaky oh yes i think so i mean if you want to go over with a fine grit sand like if you have like a you know a 400 super super fine grit sandpaper you can do that just real lightly <clears> sand <throat> it back a little bit clean it off or dust it off really well and try again but to me when i look at it sometimes if you get down low and you can see where you miss some areas your second coat's going to get that especially if you use an applicator sponge the applicator sponges really help with that 
the big square ones that I showed y'all at the beginning that I usually use to, uh, to put my gator hide on, if it's a nice, smooth, flat surface, those applicator sponges make a nice top coat of delivery. Can you distress the silk? Yes, you can, but I think you have to distress it pretty soon. It sets up uh, hard, like diamond hard sooner than the chalk paint. Um, so I think you need to, you would need to distress it pretty soon, but yes, you could. Well, especially if you're using an electric sander like I did this past week and I shared the video. Does silk come in a lot of colors? Nope. Uh, it does. It's very, they call it the Hampton colors. They're very, um, very neutral, very, very neutral colors. Grays, lots of whites, ivories, uh, different colors of blue. Um, they do have some dark, they have a black, they have like a, a deep steel color. Um, a, a rose color, more muted color tones for sure. Uh, does silk, uh, or so no wax or sealer if you're using the silk, is that right? You don't have to, no, you can be done just like this, but you can also embellish it like I'm going to with Besting Wax and Brown because I want to get in to all of those little crevices with brown wax. So that's what I'm gonna do after I finish um, painting the whole, both, both bases and the skirt that goes, the apron that goes around the side of the table. So well. for people coming in late, can you do a quick recap on what you've done so oh, far? Oh goodness, okay. Well, I think I'm gonna have to go because we got someone coming in behind me. But real quick, if you go back and you wanna watch the replay, we did, we took golden oak like the chair, just like this chair, and we showed mm -hmm. how we can turn it into the, the uh, what do you call those? Leaves. <laughs> leaves. Those table leaves that are behind there, we made them a deep espresso, but using no paint gel stain. Um, so we're showing how to do that on a table. And then I also just showed you how to clean really well with uh, white lightning, how to shower, rinse it off. And then I put a base coat down the chalk paint and then I used the same exact color of silk paint on top of it, different names, different paint, but I used one as a base and one as a topper and showed you how I'm done. This will dry, it doesn't need a top coat. I don't need any more coverage. And then I'm gonna use a best down, best stain wax and brown. If you follow me on Tracy's Fancy, I'll be going live to show that. Not tonight, but in the next few days, I'll be going live to show how I'm gonna use the Besting Wax on top of this, uh, the new silk paint here in Endless Shores. So that's it, you guys, we have to go. We ran out of time, that was super fast. Um, I'm gonna let you guys go. We have someone else coming on right behind me live. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I will be back next Wednesday night and we will tackle the chairs that belong <coughs> to this table. All right, thanks so much, you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Dixie Bell.